What if Stone Edge was in Gen 1 OU? Oh my gosh, you guys. I have wanted to do this video for a while. Because I am super excited. Because, like, holy crap. It's just a single move. Like, a move that sounds like just a slightly better rock slide. But, no. Stone Edge in Gen 1 would be crazy. And it fundamentally changes every single Pokemon that gets it. Because for those of you who do not remember, Stone Edge has a high chance to you know, get a critical hit. And in Gen 1, that means a Pokemon like Sand Slash will always get a guaranteed crit. Because I believe you need at least a 64 base speed in order to get that. So Sand Slash barely gets it. Pokemon like, you know, Pinsir get it. Dog Trio. And Pokemon like Machamp and, uh... Or no, just with champ here. Like, they don't quite get it, but their speed stat's good enough to where they're gonna get a crit most of the time. And other Pokemon like Gyarados and Dragonite, even without the high critical chance, uh, sorry, the high critical hit chance, which both of these guys still have, it's also just huge because it actually gives them a legitimate strong, like, physical move to actually use. And I don't even know where to begin. Like, because it's not just these guys, there's also so, way, like, a lot more Pokemon that learn it, which I will be showing you. So, I guess I'll start off by saying that, for a lot of these Pokemon, it pretty much fixes a lot of the main issues that they suffer with. Like, for example, Machamp. It doesn't really help you against, like, you know, a Psychic Weakness. It obviously, you would very much prefer to have, you know, um, an actual good finding move, not just some Mission OO -Well Kick. But it's still great to have, because now you can, like, you have a way to actually, like, damage things that are a huge counter to you. Stone Edge can just find out just Oko Zapdos, so Zapdos doesn't dare try to just, like, you know, bull you with a uh, Drill Peck. And while you'd be dumb to, you know, stay in against, like, an Alakazam, if they switch into that, and you predict it, a Stone Edge could pretty much just kill Alakazam too. And do a lot of damage to other special attackers, such as Starmie, or like Chansey, Oko's Jinx. So, this is just Machamp we're talking about. Sand Slash, Sword Stance user. It, it obviously likes using Earthquake, has Hyper Beam and Slash, which it already uses Slash because it's a high critical hit ratio. But now you just have, you know, um, a stone edge instead but so slash is even needed not to mention this is way more dangerous offensively even if stone edge like didn't have a like a high critical hit ratio it would still be a 100 base power of the main move it uses earthquake just less accurate so it would still be a massive buff and still a huge threat to everything in the tier and then like don't even get me started on Doug trio because while the 80 attack kind of sucks you now just have, you know, Earthquake, Slash, like, probably, like, uh, Substitute. And now, like, Dugdrio is, like, something we can't have a niche in Gen 1. Not sure if it would, because even though that speed's really good, that low HP and defense means, even though Dugdrio is a ground type, it takes a lot of damage from Stone Edge. And there are some other incredibly fast Pokemon that are already in OU. So... Probably not, but it would become a huge menace in, uh, underuse. Gyarados, for the most part, has, like, no physical moves they can really use. It has, like, Body Slip and Hyper Beam, but that's about it. Which, luckily, in Generation 1, at least, it has a 100 base special. So, not the worst thing in the world. But now that it has Stone Edge, it now has just an insanely powerful physical move, along with Hyper Beam. Except, it actually has super effective coverage. Mention how Rova it actually is in ubers or not ubers i'm underuse like i guess you now like oko you know like both dugon and definitely articuno at least i think you oko dugon i'd be surprised if you didn't and you also just like just do a lot of damage there's a lot of the waters normals etc just a really easy move for you to spam and at least when it comes to all the pokemon here uh dragonite and pincer probably benefit the most because Pinsir is already sort of decent, 
like not enough to be on the viability ranking, but with sword stance and powerful moves like submission slash hyper beam, bottom and bind, it you know if you can manage to get sword stance up, it can do a lot of damage. But a big issue it suffers from is that it gets just completely you know walled by Gengar, only having fighting and normal moves. So that's why Stone Edge comes in perfectly. Not only is that guaranteed crit, but even if it wasn't, it gives you something to hit Gengar with. So you probably don't bother with Slash anymore, as Stone Edge is a much better version. And then like, maybe like Bind, and then like, just your choice of whatever move you want, whether it be a Hyper Beam, Body Sim, or Submission. Overall, just really good. And then Dragonite is by far the best one here that can use it. Because just like... Um, Pinsir here, he suffers a lot from, you know, Gengar, because he has, like, moves other than normal moves, but they're all special, like Blizzard, Fire Blast, Thunderbolt, all of which Gengar can tank with its high special. But now with Stone Edge, you would just use Agility, Stone Edge, Wrap, and then Hyper Beam, and now you can just bully everything in the tier. You have something you, that you can hit Gengar with, and you're probably outspeeding with agility. It doesn't kill Gengar, but you don't really care too much. And now you don't even need to risk Hyper Beam. Now you can just, you know, wrap something, and then you know for a fact that Stone Edge will be a guaranteed, you know, crit. And you don't have to worry about them switching to something else. Because even if they switch into something else, they're going to take a decent amount of damage from Stone Edge, and then you can just wrap them again. So then, like, the cycle just keeps continuing. I'm not sure if it would make Dragonite an OU Pokemon. I'm still very skeptical. Because, well, Stone Edge would help it a lot. At the same time, it would be a massive hindrance. And there would certainly be a lot of Pokemon in the tier that would have Stone Edge. And obviously, even just looking at all the Pokemon here, Stone Edge would be a guaranteed KO. Which, you know, Dragonite really doesn't appreciate. So moving on to some other Pokemon that weren't it. Uh, we have some fighting types, more ground types, and even Onyx can take a, a lot, you know, a big advantage of the move. Also, while they're not here, just keep in mind, uh, Needle Queen's also a thing. And Needle Queen would basically just be like, um, Needle King, I'd imagine, but for PU. Not actually sure how good it would be and how much they would use it, but I already know that, like, you know, NU has a lot of fire types, like, you know, uh, Nine Tails, Charizard, and Moltres. And I would imagine, like, especially for, you know, the Fire Flying types, Stone Edge would be an no coat regardless. But I think you definitely appreciate having it. And it probably would be just a massive blow to the Fire types as a whole. And for the Fighting types, just like with, you know, uh, Hitmonchan, or not Hitmonchan, uh, Machamp, like, they benefit a lot from having Stone Edge, just really good coverage to help them against those flying types and the psychic types of both defense. But the difference between Machamp and these guys is that they actually have just guaranteed KOs. So, so now you have something like, you know, like probably um, Hitmonlee with Stone Edge, High Jump Kick, Substitute, and Body Slam. And suddenly he's like hitting like decently hard, has good coverage. And even things that could counter him, theoretically, like Zapdos or Alakazam, as long as you're hiding behind a substitute, you could probably just, like, actually just murder them with Stone Edge. Uh, Hitmonlee maybe has a niche in Gen 1 now. I kind of doubt it with Hitmonchan. But who knows? Golem just, he's using every single tier. And he has a little bit of a better speed set than Rhydon. So he has a... I'm actually not sure how much that changes the crit rate. I definitely don't think it's anything relevant, but... Something to consider, at least. Amastar, even though it has a base 60 attack. With Stone Edge, it's basically, you know, um... 120. So it's almost like a reverse King War in a way. So now you just have a Rock Water type that can just... Do ridiculous amount of damage on both the physical and special side. So... And even like I said, Onyx... Onyx has a base 70 speed, so Stone Edge is a guaranteed, you know, crit. It's quite literally its only move that actually does decent damage. But still, you have, you know, Stone Edge, Earthquake, Explosion, Bind. Uh, 
is it great? Absolutely not. Like, that defense is nice. But, you know. Uh, you have at least one move that can do decent damage along with Explosion. So, maybe PU Onyx becomes slightly better? Considering how many other Pokemon get Stone Edge, though, probably doesn't help too, too much. But it's... I think Onyx appreciates it. Like, in a way where he's like, at the very least, I think Bruno, you know, like, uh, becomes like 1% more difficult during his gym battle. Or at least 4 battle, I mean. But, I'm just stalling at this point. We need to go over the big four. The four Pokemon that I think would just be so overpowered that it would either break OU or it would just even end with some of them even getting a ban. Because we have Tauros, Rhydon, Kabutops, and especially Aerodactyl. These three would definitely be OU. And they would be, like, the top. Tauros is already the best Pokemon in the game. But Stone Edge fixes a lot of the problems that it usually faces. Because a lot of time, there are checks to Tauros. It just depends on what you what moves you use for the fourth move. Determines on how good you do against them. Like, for example, Hoister, with its high defense, it's very annoying for Tauros to face. Since Tauros can't hurt it that much without a crit. So that's why sometimes Tauros would go for a Thunderbolt in order to 3-hit KO Koyster, but then by using Thunderbolt, suddenly you just get walled by Gengar. And there's uh, some sets with Fire Blast, which, you know, like, ends up uh, suffering from some of the same issues. But Stone Edge fixes pretty much all of that, because now you can just go for Stone Edge, Blizzard, Body Slam, Hyper Beam, and with a guaranteed crit on Stone Edge, it does ridiculous damage to both uh, Koyster and Gengar. Where both are 2 hit KO. Granted, it means that without Earthquake, you can't get an Oko with a crit, which Tauros does have a high chance to do. But I would argue that Tauros has absolutely no problem with the trading that in for being able to consistently 2 hit both of them. And if both of them no longer, you know, like, uh, being a huge threat since you can just 2 hit KO them, it just, in general, it just makes Tauros a lot more consistent. Not to mention Stone Edge is just a good move in general. I don't remember if it's 2 hit KOs or 3 hit KOs Chansey. But either way, instead of having to go for a Body Slam or Hyper Beam and risk getting killed by Counter, Stone Edge is just more consistent. Um, I'm not so much against like the actual Tauros Mirror. I think in the Tauros Mirror, you still want to go for Body Slam. But that's more so because Stone Edge, you know, even though it's a great move, in Gen 1 would have a 79% accuracy, which is annoying as hell. Like, there's no doubt about that. But the move is just so powerful to where it's definitely worth it. And Rhydon, um, Rhydon benefits too, but it's more so for just its typing rather than actually having the move itself. I believe with Stone Edge uh, and its uh, base 40 speed stat, it's like a 64% chance to crit. Which, in and of itself, is just crazy. If it gets a crit, it can just easily Oko Chansey. You don't have to use, like, Earthquake anymore. But the fact that it's a high defense, high HP ground type is the main reason why it benefits from Stone Edge. Because with so many more Pokemon spamming Stone Edge, it can now take them pretty easily. Or I say easily, but with how many Pokemon actually get the move, it it's going to be used a lot. And obviously, you know, Rhydon can't just take all of like, these Stone Edges forever. So, it could get shipped over time, but it's overall still a really good buff. Being able to, like, at least half the time, Oko okay, Chansey turns out from a could go either way to just a good or maybe even great matchup for Rhydon. It also means that, you know, against, like, Zapdos, if they switch, instead of hitting with a Rock Slam for decent damage, a crit on Stone Edge could just be massive, depending on what you send in. It also means that Pokemon like, you know, Cloyster, Lapras, or even like Starmie, like, uh, they have to be a lot more careful when switching in, because they can just take a ridiculous amount of damage. And, oh my gosh, these two are crazy. Now, Aerodactyl is very infamous 
from having this as its move pool. Where it just has the very garbage, like Double Edge and Fire Blast, Hyper Beam for just their main attacking moves. And a single move can just change that completely. Because now with Stone Edge, not only does it just have a, a stab move, it's a guaranteed crit, which means it's basically base 200, you know, attack. Or, yeah, both base 210 attack and also just a base 200 move, like whichever one you want to uh, look at it. But, um, also that speed stat now becomes extremely relevant to where the only things that don't outspeed Aerodactyl or Jolteon, Mewtwo, and Electrode. So, this thing is just by far the best anti-lead as well as just the best revenge killer in the game. But for the love of god, don't actually use this thing as an anti-lead because you're just wasting your Aerodactyl. Because with just how fast this thing is, it can just look at anything in the tier. It just like, it, it pretty much just is able to just revenge kill everything except for Rhydon, exactly. And Slowbro, oh no, I think even Slowbro gets two hit with st Critical Stone Edge. So like, moves you would give this thing would probably just be, um, Stone Edge and Fire Blast. Fire Blast is only really either for, um, getting a burn on Rhydon or for, um, like, some things at low HP. Like probably in the red, and you want to use a slightly more accurate move and more and more honestly, you just want to save like Stone Edge power points. But it's better than Hyper Beam and Double Edge at the very least. The last moves you give would be Agility. Because one of the only other ways you could maybe counter Aerodactyl is by paralyzing it. But then by using Agility, you just completely counter that. You also get rid of the idea of Zapdos being able to go for an Agility and outspeeding and killing you. And the last move would be Substitute, which I think you would may even spam more than you would Stone Edge. Because with Rhydon being one of the main counters, and with some of the other counters only either being like, you know, Thunderbolt or Blizzard, being able to tank one of those attacks, and then either going for a free Stone Edge or Fire Blast could be huge. Especially for Rhydon's case, because Stone Edge, it's still 79% accurate, so you have... Like, you know, Zapdos hiding behind a substitute. And there's a good chance that Stone Edge might miss. Which means Zap- or not Zapdos, Aerodactyl has more chances to go for Fire Blast. Which could potentially burn, you know, uh, Rhydon. And while Aerodactyl can't really have many ways of hurting Rhydon after that, you still have plenty of other teammates. And just in general, it just means that, you know, Rhydon just less of a threat. And that's another thing. Because of how hard Aerodactyl hits, and because of how fast it is, there is absolutely no problem in just dedicating an entire team just to take out Aerodactyl's counters. Same way how for the 5 minutes that Shininja was in uh, National Dex um, OU, you just had entire teams that only dedicated towards, you know, taking out uh, Terra Electric, Air Blue, and Shininja. And having how much of water types or grass types to take out right on, and then just having your Aerodactyl go to town, I think is just very plausible. And I think that Aerodactyl could actually get banned. Not that it would be the most overpowered thing in theory, because in theory, you still have Jolteon, which can probably just Oko with uh, Thunderbolt or paralyze it. You have Pokemon like Starmory that can serve at least, you know, one Stone Edge and then go for a Thunder Wave. But I think in execution, Always using Aerodactyl as a revenge killer. And more importantly, like the checks it has being just, you know, probably just crumbling in, ex in execution. Because again, it's not just, you know, Aerodactyl that I don't have to worry about. There would be a lot of Pokemon that would have rock moves it would have to switch into. So just, I just don't see it being very fun. I see Stone Edge power creeping the entire tier. And so many, you know, people getting annoyed and getting cheesed. Not just from, you know, being hit with a very powerful move, but also losing games because you're using Stone Edge. And y'all know how it works. If it's not 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate. Unless your opponent is using it, then it's 200% accurate. <laughs> and that's not even, like, the only Pokemon I think would be OU. And yes, Aerodactyl would definitely become OU overnight. But so would Kabutops. 
Because Kabutops pretty much solves a lot of Aerodactyl's problems, where... Well, only the one it really suffers from, that being, you know, a uh, terrible Rhydon matchup. Because overnight, Rock and Water is the most terrifying stab combination in the game. If you have both of these, you pretty much can just damage anything and everything. Because with uh, Surf, you now, um, you Oko Rhydon easily. And with Stone Edge, you just hurt everything else. And I think there's no reason not to use these two together. Because even if one of them goes down, the other one can very easily pick up the slack. You mo you'd most likely use Kabutops first. Because with Kabutops, you wouldn't dare switch into um, Rhydon. Because not only does Rhydon fear a Stab Surf, but also, even if like uh, you don't use something else, Either with Sword Sands and Hyper Beam, or just a Critical Stone Edge, Kabutops can just murder and do a, a huge amount of damage to everything. Not to mention, like, if Kabutops damages everything before Aerodactyl, or if you want to use, like, Aerodactyl as an anti-lead, maybe try to, uh, try to scare the Rhydon out, uh, immediately. Then you can have Kabutops be a late-game Sword Sand Sweeper, or just a Sweeper with Stone Edge, depending on what HP the Pokemon's, uh, you know, uh, HP sets are at. They would most likely be around the yellow or red. So, in some ways, Kabutops would even be, like, kind of better than Aerodactyl. Because, you know, just overall more versatile and can just hit on, you know, both the physical and special side. Maybe Omastar would also rise, but I think Kabutops would be way more likely. Just because it's faster and, you know, just sword stance is just a really powerful move. And yeah, very easily, Kabutops becomes the best Sword Stance user in the game. And maybe even just of all time. So, I've already w gone over a long time just going over this Dupree analysis, which is all these Pokemon here, and Unicorn, who I couldn't fit. Or I could have put it here, but Unicorn isn't as big as these four. We have some replays to go over. And before doing that, I'm just going to make the call now that Stone Edge would easily easily become the strongest move in gen 1 stronger than you know um hyper beam stronger than explosion and even stronger than like a, a move like spore since spore basically is only used on a bad pokemon anyways which i know is a really really bold claim but actually look at so many of these like look at aerodactyl and kabutops here look at machamp look at doug trio and dragonite it's not just being a powerful move, it's also the fact that for the Pokemon that do get it, it solves so many of their issues. Like, just Tauros here. Like, you know, like, um, Stone Edge makes Tauros go from having to pick a fourth move, which determines which Pokemon it has a bad matchup against, to having no problem facing anything and anything in the tier. Aerodactyl overnight can just go from outspeeding and O-coing, you know, Alakazam, Shansi, Cloyster, putting Chansey into red HP, and then Kabutops is just like that, but like, you know, it can even just, you know, Oko like a ground types too. Machamp can now Oko the Pokemon that it, that beats it if it predicts correctly. And even like, you know, like other Pokemon like Gyarados or Pokemon in the lower tiers, suddenly everything in every tier hits so much harder. And unlike, you know, Hyper Beam, which has an, a Pokemon that's immune to it, and has a really bad downside of just having to recharge if it isn't Oko, you can spam Rock Swipe as much as you want, and while it might miss a little bit of the time, that is nowhere near as bad as having to recharge, or having a Pokemon get a free switch in. Nothing is immune to Rock, and the only things that resist it can't just take it forever. So, why wouldn't Stone Edge be the strongest move in the game? It's just a base 200, you know, power move, for the most part, that you can just spam as much as you want. You can disagree with me as much as you want. You can also disagree with, um, Aerodactyl not being banned to Ubers. But keep in mind, Sneezer was just banned. Reggie Lucky was banned, just from getting a new move, basically. Other Pokemon have been banned for less. And I think for Aerodactyl, it would be more, more or less... Not that uh, uh, Gen 1 OU couldn't deal with it, 
but more so the fact that it's just very unfun to play against and very scummy. Because there's quite frankly not really anything you can do if you have a Pokemon low HP and they take an Aerodactyl. You have to choose to either let your Aerodactyl kill it or s switch into your Rhydon and then like have your opponent most likely see that coming with a Fire Blast, Substitute, or switching into like an Executor or like a Swellbro. Which by the way, Executor and Swellbro, even though both of them get like two shot by Stone Edge, still a massive buff. Because with Pokemon like Chansey and Jinx taking a huge, you know, downturn, because of just how easily they just get damaged, I think lead Pokemon, or just like the game in general, would lean way more towards being bulky. So I think that Executor would probably be like a more better lead than like Jinx or Alakazam or even Gengar. And I think Swellbro could just be good because you have like, again, something like Aerodactyl, they switch into their Rhydon, you switch into Swellbro, and suddenly Swellbro just has a free opportunity to go for, you know, Amnesia, which in of itself could cause a whole bunch of problems. So, like, tell me in the comments if you think that Stone Edge would get banned, because if not Aerodactyl, I can even see the move itself being just a huge problem and everyone just having to get rid of it. But I... It'd be impossible to tell when I'm actually, you know, like, testing it out. And one day I would like to do a generation jumble, which is moves. But, uh, not anytime soon. Which, by the way, don't forget to go in the description, go on Google Dog, vote for the Pokemon you'd, you'd like to see in the generation jumble. And let's finally go on to some of these replays. We only have six, but they're, uh, a little bit longer than normal. Are we some of them? Are we starting off with the boy himself? Oh, wait, no, we're not. We're starting with Macham. I forgot about that. And, like, yeah, look here. Like, Stone Edge just O code Zapdos pretty easily. Oh, well, Alakazam, you know, uh, revenge code. Imagine if the Zapdos just switch into Alakazam. Suddenly, Stone Edge kills, and even if Zapdos goes for Drill Peck, Stone Edge would just code the Zapdos too. And taking out, like, a Zapdos and an Alakazam with a freaking Machamp. Uh, that's- that's a good trade, I would say. But maybe you can disagree with me if you want. <laughs> and then Koyster versus Tauros. Like, look at this! It does 61%! Even if Koyster goes for Clamp, it doesn't really accomplish anything. And Stone Edge does, like, even more to Gengar. And Gengar is a speed tie, so maybe it's still worth using Hypnosis, but... It's still very, very dangerous for both of them. And Quasar just has, like, no real reason to, like, go from the matchup in the first place. Tauros, in just one move, just took out two of, like, the main Pokemon that can take it on in Gen 1 OU. And that's insane. And then Kabutops. But Kabutops already has a niche for being able to Oko Tauros with, you know, um... Uh, just, like, Hydra Pump. Well, not Oko, 3 hit KO. But, here... It doesn't need a 3 KO with Hydra Pump. It can just use Stone Edge instead. And you're probably wondering why I went for Stone Edge and not Earthquake. And that's because, like again, Stone Edge would probably be the better move just throughout. So in all reality, Tauros wouldn't even like use Earthquake as much as it would anymore. It would almost always rather use Stone Edge. Unless for like Kabutops exactly. And, and if that's the case... It just means the Kabutops matchup against Tauros is even better. Maybe even going from, you know, like, uh, bad or quickly either way to just good. If it only has Stone Edge to really hurt, you know, Kabutops with. And Kabutops hits a lot of other stuff too. Oh boy, my voice is starting to get out. I need a... Oh, oh boy, I'll deal with this later. Um, and then, like I said for Chansey, uh, Stone Edge, it just... Oko's with a crit. Which is very likely, even for a slow Pokemon like Rhydon. No granted though, Chansey is so faster, it can crit too. Not to mention, it can just, like, freeze Rhydon. So it's still not a matchup where Rhydon always wins. But I think it now goes from a good go the way in Chansey's favor, to one that's in Rhydon's favor. And then with Dragonite. It can go for agility, so it doesn't care about paralysis. And Gengar, doesn't really care about either. Now granted, Paralysis is so very annoying, so you're still going to get a lot of free turns, which is nice. But, being able to actually hit Gengar is, you know, Dragonite really appreciates it. 
uh, you still, this right here might be a reason why you would, it would still kind of suck, but who knows? Maybe, um, maybe I, w I just got very unlucky with that replay. But I still don't think Dragonite would be OU. Especially with, you know, like, Aerodactyl not being a mainstay. It just makes it even harder for Dragonite to get the opening it needs. And then, Aerodactyl himself. Look at that. Look at how much damage it does to Chansey. That's just ridiculous. And it Oko's, like, a Coyster too. And just hiding behind a Substitute. While granted, it can still get status. Even then, like, what really wants to take, you know, um... A Stone Edge, and even if Jolteon, you know, gets paralyzed, it still has to worry about, you know, being hit with two Stone Edges, because you still have the problem of Aerodactyl, just you, you need to hit it twice in order to kill it. So maybe it's good that right on here, but mm, I never had to see how much uh, Stone Edge did. And also, someone did recommend that maybe Dugtrio could be like a counter to its, towards Aerodactyl, and I'm sure Stone Edge would probably kill but i did do a replay where i just want to see how much stone edge did to doug trio and it did 70 percent and then like you know like it's a low hp well defense pokemon you shouldn't be surprised but here's like another one where like aerodactyl could be used as like an anti-lead once rhydon gets burned it becomes very very useless and it just makes it less effective in general and Stone Edge also Oko's with Rhydon, but maybe that's not surprising. And even against, like, Alakazam, like, uh, Stone Edge probably would have Oko'd. And, like, I, I think I made my point for the most part. So, the am just showing what just, like, a game here. And even with this game, like, you can probably just see just how much faster things are going. Gen 1's usually pretty infamous from having, you know, like, games go on forever. But here, Pokemon are getting o code just as often as you would see them get o code in, like, Gen 9. So, I think just this game here, even if it's probably not being played optimally, can just show just how much a single move power creeps a Gen. Like, I think, you know, um, Stone Edge would power creep Gen 1 way more than Gen 4 uh, power crept, um, what's it called? A Stealth Rocks uh, power creep Gen 4, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's how much uh, Stone Edge does. It's a 3 hit KO. So, a little bit more consistent than just, like, using, like, Body Slam and the Body Slam and the Hyper Beam. But at the same time, considering, you know, uh, the actual accuracy for um, Stone Edge, just be safe and go for Body Slam. And Aerodactyl, like, once right on just cleaned up, it can just revenge kill everything, if not just Oko entirely. So, what do you think? Do you think I'm hyping up Stone Edge way too much? Or do you think some of these replays just proved my point? That, yeah, Stone Edge, it's a little too good for Gen 1. And I think Aerodactyl would probably be Ubers. Like, and, like, maybe, like, it's not o OP as, like, other Ubers Pokemon, like, let's say Gen 4 Garchomp. But, I just think, like, people would optimize it. And I feel like Pokemon that you would think would be counters, like Starmie, Jolteon, or Rhydon, people would obviously play around it. And I think it would be way more likely for Aerodactyl players to play around Aerodactyl's weaknesses than it would be for people to play around Aerodactyl. Especially since Rhydon is the only true answer in the first place. And one Pokemon can't do anything. Even Aerodactyl can't do anything. But its teammates, such as Tauros and Kabutops, um, yeah, they... They, they can, you know, do a good job helping Aerodactyl. In fact, considering both of them can just take on Rhydon, like, you could probably just click buttons and just win very easily. But I want to know what you think, because maybe I just, I'm going to Tunnel Vision here. Uh, please let me know what you think. And let me know if you think Stone Edge will be the strongest move in Gen 1. I'd especially love to hear your thoughts on that. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, I look forward to hearing from you.